Google is evil. Google is evil. Google is evil. Google is evil. What's up guys, Nuance Bro checking in, and as you can see from the Alex Jones clip I just included, we're going to be talking about Google's CEO going up to Congress and what transpired. So let's take a look. Gentleman from Texas, Mr. Poe, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm over here on this side. I have an iPhone. <laughs> oh, he's bringing up an iPhone to Google CEO. You already know this is going to be good. And if I move from here and go over there and sit with my Democrat friends, which will make them real nervous. Does Google track my movement? Does Google, through this phone, know that I have moved here and moved over to the left? I just love how the congressman has that arrogant grin on his face where he's like, oh yeah, I got him here. He, he, he's not going to know how to answer this question. It's either yes or no. Uh not by default. There may be a Google service which you've opted in to use, uh, and if- So Google knows that I am moving over there. It's, it's not a trick question. No, it's not a trick question. It's a dumb question. <laughs> you know, you make $100 million a year, you ought to be able to answer that question. Does Google know through this phone that I am moving over there and sit next to Mr. Johnson, which would make him real nervous? It's his- <laughs> I love how you can look in the background here and see some of the- younger millennials that are around my age kind of laughing and even Google CEO is kind of just like, Oh my God. Like, I don't think this guy realizes how much of a fool he's making out of himself, but he, he almost can't even keep in his laughter. Cause when, when I saw this, I just started laughing. Question. I, it's yes or no. I wouldn't be able to answer without looking. <laughs> Look, he can't help. <laughs> he's trying so hard not to laugh. And, uh, you can't say yes or no uh, without knowing more details. Sir. If I walk over there and sit next to Mr. Johnson. Oh my God, he's really going for this same question again. This is, it's almost painful to watch, honestly. And carry my phone. Does Google know that I was sitting here and then I moved over there? You're welcome anytime, Judge. <laughs> uh, yes or no? I genuinely don't know without knowing. Well, I'm what shocked you don't know. Uh, I, I think Google obviously does. What really amazes me about this question is that the congressman didn't seem to even bother to ask any of his millennial aged interns who work for him as, you know, congressional staffers who would obviously know the answer to this question. You don't bring an iPhone and ask Google CEO whether Google's tracking that phone. It's a totally different company. It's Apple. It has nothing to do with Google. Now, if he asks something about if I download this specific Google app or any app associated with Google in any way, and maybe location feature, does it track it if location features are off? If it's on, is it able to sort of, you know, these are the better questions to ask, but he just so poorly prepared for this and made a fool of himself. He could have actually gotten some, uh, some, some legitimate, interesting answers out of this, uh, out of the CEO. But instead, he came off as like this crazy grandpa who doesn't understand technology. And all these articles can now run about how Congress doesn't understand technology and all that stuff. So it's pretty disappointing. As uh, Mr. Cohen has stated, I think most Americans don't know all the things that this phone can do. And you, congressmen, are the prime example. And one thing that it can do is... Uh, disseminate information really that we are unaware of to all different people out there. The United States should change the rules and make it so that we as consumers opt in. Otherwise, that information is not disseminated. That is just, uh, just my opinion. Now, I know I've been giving Congressman Poe a hard time here, but I think his heart is in the right place. And we definitely do need more transparency around what these companies are doing with our data and privacy regulations and things around that area. But he just went about it the wrong way. But I, I don't think his heart's in the wrong place when it comes to this issue. But before I get into the next clip, which is even more awesome, I just want to point out this individual who is dressed as the Monopoly man and trolling Google CEO the entire time. I mean, just take a look at this. This is hilarious. Just peeking over people's shoulders with a monocle. Just being hilarious. <laughs> oh, I love it. And then look at this. It's like, oh, where's he going? Where's he going? And then he comes back with a, just a giant cartoonish mustache. It just grows five times in size. It's hilarious. And then, oh, the monocle popped out. 
Oh, this was just priceless and it made my day. Anyways, let's get to the next clip. Now, according to media reports, Google found evidence that Russian agents spent thousands of dollars to purchase ads on its advertising platforms that span multiple Google products as part of the agents, the Russian agents campaign to interfere in the election two years ago. Okay, so of course it can't be a congressional hearing without Russia, Russia, Russia. So we got some Russia conspiracy theories going here and he's talking about thousands of dollars being spent on Google and he wants Google CEO to answer for it. So, so let's see what he's going to say. Additionally, Juniper Downs, head of global policy for YouTube, testified in July that YouTube had identified and shut down multiple and shut down multiple channels containing thousands of videos associated with the Russian misinformation campaign. Does Google now know the full extent to which its online platforms were exploited by Russian actors in the election two years ago? We have, uh, you know, we undertook a very thorough investigation, and in 2016, uh, we, we now know that uh, there were uh, two main ad accounts uh, linked to Russia, which, uh, which you know, advertised on Google for about $4,700 in advertising. $4,700. That's not 47,000. That's not 470,000. That's not 4.7 million. $4,700. That's, that, that's people's monthly salary. That's people's a check people get in one month, the average American. That, that's nothing. We also found other limited- Total of $4,700. That's right. <laughs> so, so the congressman actually interrupts and he's like, wait, to total of $4,700? Like he actually didn't even know what the number was. He asked this question having no clue what the actual number was. And he's like, wait, wait total of $4,700? Oh crap, why did I even ask this question? It makes my point look really bad. And then obviously Google CEO is like, that's right. That, that, that's how stupid your question was. It was literally nothing, $4,700 in a campaign. He's like, $4,700, that, that's what I make in a minute as Google CEO. <laughs> and let me take out my calculator. Let's see actually how much that is. So the entire 2016 campaign cost about $6.5 billion. So we'll take 4,700 divided by 6.5 billion. And then we'll multiply by 100 to get a percentage. That's 0.0007%. Good job, Congress. You found 0.000, hold on, 0.00007% of Russian interference through Google. Congratulations. Now, I know I'm giving members of Congress a hard time here, but... They were asking ridiculous questions, but they weren't all asking ridiculous questions. Some important questions were being asked, so we're going to focus on some of that right now. Mr. Pichai, let me start out with uh, uh, something real quickly. We've heard several times this morning uh, the mention that 90% of the time that a person, he or she, does an internet search that it's through Google. Would you basically agree that that's, that, that's true? It, more than ever, there are many ways to use access information. Just to give an example, if you're, if you're trying to shop, if you're trying to buy something, more than 50% of product searches originate with Amazon in the US today. Uh, if you're looking for information on, on news, today you can get it from more sources than ever before. But do, do, do you dispute then the 90% number? You know, our internal, I mean, it's tough for us to assess the numbers. There are external studies which have shown uh, different numbers, including lower numbers okay. than that. Okay. Now, most people watching probably didn't think much of that question, but it was actually extremely important. The way the congressman was setting up that question was to paint Google as a monopoly. So when someone states that Google's responsible for 90% of searches, Google automatically wants to say like, well, no, that depends on how you measure it, the metrics. I mean, look at Amazon, like 50% of whatever product searches are on Amazon. We don't deal with that. Or if you look at, you know, these kind of searches or the, that kind of search, it really depends on how you kind of quantify and measure these searches in different areas. But Basically, the 90% figure is actually true. Most of the searches are done on Google. No one's going on Bing. No one's going on Yahoo search um, unless they're, they're just not really, you know, technologically savvy. Most people are using Google for search. But in an attempt to defend themselves from antitrust laws, they're trying to paint themselves as not being a monopoly. Oh, no, we're not responsible for most. There, there's figures that show lower than that. You got Amazon with the searches and we're not just a search company. For example, Google used to be the actual just 
company, right? But now it's Alphabet is the parent company that has all these other companies of which Google is one. So they can say, look, we're not a monopoly. We're actually not just a search company. We're in, we're a tech company and we're doing cars and we're doing, you know, YouTube videos and we do all kinds of things. It's not just search. So we can't be a monopoly because we're in all these different sectors. So you would have to say we're a monopoly on all those different sectors that we own. So they're trying to make it as complicated of a case to prosecute them under antitrust laws. It looks like you guys have a policy of do no evil, right? Is that fair to say you, you it's not our official policy, but you know, it's a, it's a statement which has been communicated by us internally. This is a bit misleading from Google CEO because it's not just a statement that's being communicated internally. It was actually a part of their corporate code of conduct since the year 2000, but it was removed for some reason earlier this year in around April or May, and they changed it to do the right thing. Also, the phrase was don't be evil, not do no evil, and it was actually their unofficial motto. And and other people have brought up the... the uh the work that you may or may not be doing in China, and I want a clarification of that. Are you in looking to expand in China and cooperate with the Chinese government on a platform release in China? Um, to the question, it's about search. We, we, right now, we have no plans to launch search in China. We have always, over the years, explored how best we can uh, continue to serve users in China, but that's what we're doing. Are you doing anything with the data share with the Chinese government? Uh, today we don't operate our services uh, which, which involve user data uh, like Google Search or Gmail in China and so no. So you're telling me nothing at all then in China? We do provide, you know, for example, Android, which is an operating system. We work with partners around the world and, and there are OEM manufacturers around the world, including in China. So, so manufacturers, but beyond manufacturers, any, any other platform use? We don't have any special agreements on user data uh, uh, today. With Chinese it. government. Uh, that's right. Okay. So here he keeps saying user data, user data, user data, but that's not what the congressman was asking. He was asking, you know, what other services do you provide to the Chinese government? And he started going into like, oh, well, we do have things with, you know, Android. We do, you know, phones out there. But he's like, other than manufacturing, is there anything you do with the Chinese government? And he's like, well, we don't do anything with user data. That's not the question. I start getting really suspicious when people start substituting their own version of the question and then answering that version of the question that they came up with. So if someone asks, do you provide any of those services? We don't provide any user data. No, but I asked if you provided any services. Oh, we don't. We, we absolutely do not provide any user data. That wasn't the question. They're asking about services and you're not answering that question. So it seems like there's something they're trying to hide there, but he doesn't also doesn't want to lie to Congress. So he just answers the version of the question he wants to answer. He doesn't actually answer the specific question he was asked. Um, do you share the data that you collect on civilians with the United States federal government? We comply with valid law enforcement requ uh, request, and you know, and we, uh, with, with due process, we comply with valid law so enforcement. What's the extent of that? You know, we publish a transparency report in which we uh, give insights into the law enforcement requests we have gotten and our, uh, you know, and, and our compliance there. The last question I have, real quickly, um, in May 2016, Google banned all ads by payday lenders, even though it invested in LendUp, which is effectively a payday lender. Um, and it, it banned ads by, by competitors. Is that a normal practice? Uh, Congressman, we, we undertook ad policies in that particular area because we saw evidence of uh, misuse and we had gotten a lot of feedback and that's what we reacted to. Did you, did you ban your own uh, LindUp app? I don't think Google is involved. I think one of our uh, sister companies is a, a you know has uh, has an investment in in Lindup. Right. Uh, I, I think that's my understanding. Okay, the was it banned? Gentleman Sam has. Expired. I can follow up. I'm not aware of the specifics. I'm happy to follow. Yeah. Thank you. I have to give Congressman Biggs a lot of props here. He asked Google's CEO a lot of important questions. He asked about China and their involvement with them, what kind of services they provide, user data related questions, etc and also about the US government and what information they share with them. He also briefly touched upon Google's anti-competitive practices, mentioning the payday loan companies. He talked about Google, or at least one of its subsidiaries or sister companies, buying a payday loan company, but then banning the advertisements for payday loans. And he wanted to know if, you know, maybe he excluded the payday loan company that they purchased and, you know, 
from from the ban at least and still maybe promoted it. And it seemed like Google's CEO didn't have an answer to that question or at least didn't want to answer the question. So uh, that, that's actually a really interesting question. I didn't know uh, that was going on. I didn't know it was a policy of theirs to ban those payday loan companies, which really those payday loan companies are not really so good anyway. So I can understand a ban on them. But if Google's also purchasing those companies at, while at the same time banning them, that would really be an interesting development. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, there's various links in the description box down below, as well as merch. And I'll see you next time, bro.